Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to a Mickey video. And today, so this thing just came out. I bought it from Noon. This thing just came on my door, waiting on my door. So today, we're going to be opening this Bluetooth keyboard. So as you can see, this is a $10 Bluetooth keyboard. So in dirhams wise, it does vary. So from what I can see is that this is 10 dirhams. I mean, this is a, this is $10. And in terms of dirhams, it is actually somewhere around 30 to 40 dirhams. And it does vary. Our price do vary. So yeah. I got it for 15 dirhams, which is like somewhere around 17 dollars. So as you can see, this is the Bluetooth keyboard BK100 Bluetooth keyboard for Android, Windows, and iOS. So as you can see, this is the keyboard here. Um, I actually got a different version. It's not. It's not this one. As you can see, it's not this one. It's a different version which has the you know touchpad, which we use you know to like you know use the scrolling and all that stuff for touchpad. We have that touchpad right now. So I bought the touchpad one so that you know I can you know do the scoring stuff. So this one I mainly bought it for my iPad work, my school work, and all that thing. So as you can see, this is the iPad Pro I use, and you guys can literally see that on my reaction videos because that's what I use for you know this thing reaction. And so this is the iPad Pro I use for school. So as you can see, this is the one here, iPad Pro. So we use it for my reaction base, and normally the video is also recorded in an iPad Pro, which is a pretty old model, 2016 one though. So I'm planning to get a new one. So yeah. This is the 2018 model, so it's a little better. And of course, iPad Pros generally last for so long, so there's nothing to worry about. And so I need to use like you know keyboard for doing school works and doing programming. If you guys don't know, I'm a programmer. I've learned uh, Java, Swift, and uh, C plus uh, C sharp. So I do I do like I love to do programming. And you know to do programming on the iPad, it doesn't like feel so, you know natural when you do it when you type on the iPad. So that's why I really bought this thing. And also for school work in general. So yeah. In some cases, my laptop doesn't work, so I use my um, iPad to do most of my work. And yeah, that's why I really wanted to get this instead of buying that $100 Apple version. That's too costly, and I don't know, no one will buy that. It's just too costly. Of course, they will. there are people who buy that, but it's just too costly. I really wanted to save a lot of money. So for 10 bucks, definitely $90 being saved. I guess I'm pretty sure that's going to be saved. $90 is going to be saved from this. So... That's why I bought this one because it's just ten dollars, and really I it, I don't mind if it doesn't work. It's just ten dollars. I can give it back also. So if it's a hundred dollars one, yeah, that's gonna be a painful. That's gonna be so painful. So for that reason, I bought this thing, um, just you know to use my schoolwork, and it's also very small. That's what people say. So I got some Arabic comments. Of course, it's noon, so they will have the Arabic, you know, you know comments, and you know that this thing review comments. So some of them say it's very small, and. Uh, the other people say that the iPad, the, this thing, it doesn't work well on iPad. It does glitch out or something like that. I have no idea. But for 10 bucks, you know, say I took the risk. So, yeah, let's see if this is really cool. So, as you can see, this is a $10 one. So, um, this is the ultra slim, ultra light, and easy to carry. So, at the back, we have the um, super easy four-step setting. Um, um, slide on the power uh, switch off and on button. So, we have to click on off and on. Then you have a double tap on the connect button, then activate your device, meaning your iPad or your, you know, Samsung tab, and all that thing. And finally, you have click on Bluetooth 3D, I mean, you have to click on that Bluetooth stuff. So yeah, as you can see, these are the features they're telling you guys can quickly read it. I don't know if this is true or not. Is it going to be really applicable? Like, you know, you know, board compatibility and all that stuff. So I really don't know whether it is really compatible or not. Like, I, I don't know. So yeah, let's just see what is inside here. So let's open this. And oh wow, yeah, yeah, it really feels so light, dude. This is the one, like, there's nothing else, there's no wrapper for this. Wait, what? Where's the other one? Wait. Oh, wait, 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 what? What? Oh, okay, as you can see, guys, there's something inside here. That's the that must be the USB C port. Hopefully, it is. Oh, it's not USB C, it's not that USB C, it's like you know, the old school. USB port, which we use for gay fake stuff, Game Boy stuff, all that stuff. Like the old Nokia stuff. This is the old Nokia, Nokia, this thing, connector stuff. So, wow, this is, this is, this is so small. Um, so let's see, let's see how we do, how we do this. Um, first things first, the box though, the box doesn't feel premium. So first things first, this is what I would actually give out. The box doesn't feel premium at all. It really felt like it came out, like it was like completely broken. So apparently this is the black color model. As you can see, there's black, black, yeah, uh, black, white, blue, and orange. I mean, yellow, yellow, orange. So, um, um, I guess we got the black version. Yeah, we got the black version. And also, as you can see, we have the Arabic keys. This is the one here, Arabic keys, and of course, the English ones. 
So, and we also have the FN keys, as you can see here, FN. Of course, FN is very important. So, FN is the blue color one, so if you click FN, and then you have Windows, iOS, all that stuff, and you click on all that stuff. This, I guess, is to stop the touchpad, FN, the blue color you can see here. Stop the touchpad, I don't know why they kept it here, they could have kept it here somewhere, or something like that. But, and then this is the touchpad stuff, as I was talking about, this is the touchpad. That's why I really got it, so as you can see, this is the one. So, let me just try it, let me just look at the back. Um, first things first is to switch on the button, so let's quickly switch on. Okay, so the blue light, okay, it's gone. Wait, what? It's not charged? Okay, then, connect button. So let me just see where's the connect button. Wait, is this a scam? Are you kidding me? Is this a scam? Where is the connect button? What? Like, there's no connect button anywhere. Can you see this? There is no FN connect or anything like that. What? Oh, rip. I guess, uh, we got, uh... I guess, I guess, I guess, this is, this is, this is scam. Wait, there must be a solution for this. So I'll just check out on YouTube, by the way, I'll just go quickly on YouTube. There's no instructions. Trust me guys, I didn't like open it and there's no instructions inside here. There is no instruction. We what? There's no instruction here telling us how to connect it. And by the way, you can clearly see that this is different model than the one as you can see here. And from this, okay, and this model clearly has a connect button. What about this? Where's the connect? What? Seriously? Let me off it right now. I don't get it. I really don't get it. So I'll just see some YouTube videos. By the way, I'll quickly come and see it. Guys, for a second, I really got worried though. Wow. So apparently to actually connect this. So I did go through a couple of videos searching like, you know, um, BK100 Bluetooth keyboard with touchpad. And I got a couple of them that look exactly same to this. So from what I can assume is that... Um, they're like different knockoff brands which have this stuff this exact same, you know look to it exact same light feeling to it So from what I can see is that this one apparently to connect this one you have to click on FNC So let me just open it as you can see it's opening It's opening and to connect it you have to click on FN and you have to click on C Which will start this thing, you know this thing as you can see the light will keep beeping out and I was ready to you know pair so yeah, Bluetooth is ready to pair. So that's what it is. This this keyboard is ready to pair. So I guess that's how you connect. Thank God, relief. I really got so scared that this was a scam. Oh yeah, apparently it's not a scam. They were really honest about it. So yeah, maybe from what I can assume is that. So this is my assumption. Um, as you can see, this is the box. So I guess it's the same company, but they're giving us the same box. They're different, a different box. The same company, BK100 is doing this, but they gave us this different box. I don't know if this is for everyone, I'll leave it in the links in the description, guys. So it is working. It is apparently working. I got really scared for a second. Luckily, I did quickly some researchers and found it. So yeah, let's now connect you with the iPad that I use for school stuff and all. So yeah. So guys, this is the iPad I'm using, guys. And this, as you can see, this is the iPad Pro 18, 2018 model. Really good though, really is very awesome. And this is the keyboard. And as you can see, there's something below. This is, um, if I'm not wrong, of course, this is the fire tab. So I'm gonna do another testing on a fire tab. So just to see whether it works or not, because I just wanna see if it also works on the fire tab. So, because it didn't tell that they know it works on the fire tab. So yeah, let's see if the fire tab also works. This is not mine, this is my brother's. So yeah, so this is the iPad as you can see. And as I said, to connect it, you have to keep this on. You have to keep this on, so like this. So this is off and so you have to slide it to on it. And you can see that light coming very quickly, that means it's on. And then you click F and C to connect. So yeah, this is how it happens, this is how it connects. And as you can see, it automatically connects. I mean, the Bluetooth device comes in place and it's connected. So the first thing you will notice is that blue color thing coming in. So don't worry, this is actually activate button. So this is like the activate stuff. So you can, you know, go, um, so I'll tell you guys one thing to very, very important. So you have to do this before using the computer. Since this has the space button, space button, um, just just a second, let me tell you where to go. So you go to accessibilities, first you go to accessibilities, then go to keyboard, as you can see. So you can just gonna use it using the mouse with the touchpad. And then you go to full keyboard access. So you do this before the this thing starts. You do this because it's very important because it's gonna ruin you guys. Um, so what happens is here, there's a, something called activate button. So if you're gonna be asking me what is activate this button is that um, this is when this is already default, so this is default to add on. So there's something that you have to do is to remove the activate button because at default, when you click on space, it activates. So right now, if I click on space, nothing activates. But uh, if I assign it space, it'll be activating. So that means when I click space, it doesn't do the space stuff that it normally do. 
whereas it'll activate and make those blue color thing that you saw there, which is gonna be very difficult to type and it's very irritating. This happened to me just right after, and then a little bit help, um, a little bit, you know, figuring from my side. Um, so remove the activate button. So that's also there. This is all inbuilt, so it's the iPad's fault, it's in inbuilt. And also the other thing I should say, there, there's some minor lags, and I understand these lags should be there because of course it's Bluetooth, whereas the Magic Keyboard, the one that's there for the M1 Pro iPads, that's not Bluetooth. It really works well, it, it really works well. So scrolling down to scroll, um, to scroll down or up, you click your double hand like this, do something like this, and it works fine. It works fine. It works perfectly fine. So yeah, it's really cool. Now, of course, for the main reason why I bought this was to type something. So let's go to my programming app that I use. Um, this is for Java. I use for Java and C++ and Swift. So let me just go to um, this code stack, I guess. I'll leave this app in the links in the description. I guess this works only with the iPads. So yeah, let's make some random program. That's fine. Um, so you click on space. And so you see these black things. Don't need to worry about that. That's inbuilt. So it's it's the app's fault for not having this, you know, update ability or something. It's the app's fault. So it's not the fault on the keyboard or anything like that. So I'm just going to write um, something like... Um, um, MAQ program and see when you click space. So if that activate button wasn't, you know, deleted, um, the activate at general and default will have space on it. So if that is, um, uh, we will have the key space. So activate for the activate button, you click space to activate. So you should remove that so that you can type and, you know, you can type easily. So yeah, I click MAQ right now and enter. Yeah, enter. And, uh, sorry, now let's go to the template. Um, I'm going to use Java for now. Basic, of course. MAQ program, so let's try this. So let's try one more, one something else, like here. Um, I'm gonna go for SOP systemout.println. So that means uh, this is the printing key, so system.out.println is the printing key. So we do this. And then um, the other thing to notice is that normally when you have the normal keyboard, um, for using shift, uh, you use shift, um, shift P to get the this button, what's called the, the coat. But right now it's FN because of course it's so small. So to like, you know, add every keys, they have to use the FN as the you know, option. So what you do is you do FN this thing at this situation. And then we're gonna write uh, subscribe to my, my channel. Channel. So make sure you subscribe to my channel guys. The computer says that. And I'm gonna just zoom it out a bit. I'm just gonna do this a bit. So you can clearly see what I'm, what I'm typing, so yeah. So this is what I type, and once you end this off, you should put the semicolon. This is very important in programming, you have to put the semicolon. The next thing I'm gonna do is uh, make an if case, just an if case for fun. Um, so let's say, let's, let's do an int variable. Int v is equal to 27, so, okay? Int v is equal to 27 for this situation. Okay. So let's write an if case, just to give you a small idea. So if, um, if, the, if v, is equal to, this is how you write, if v is equal to, or like this, right, uh, yeah, it's, if v is equal to zero, oh, sorry. So as you can see, what, what happened right now is that it's too smooth, the, the, the touchpad's a bit smooth, so what happens right now is that since the touchpad is very soft, even the slightest touch do count, so we have to be a bit careful. So it's like, if v is equal to zero, if int v is equal to zero, then you perform this program. Um, just a second, um, just a second, and we'll just write and, 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 so just and, we'll write and, 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 v is greater than, greater than negative one. On the keyboard, normal keyboard, you do not, uh, you, you can just write shift and you can just do shift to get this, uh, this, this thing, um, this uh, syntax, I don't know what you call this, I forgot. Um, so what you do here is, instead of, uh, you, instead of using shift, you have to use fn, so use fn.
So what we did was we, 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 uh, we gave a value for V. And so what we're checking is the value of V is 27. And so we're checking whether if V is equal to zero and V is greater than negative one, then you say it's equal to zero. And then, and then if, uh, and then we have the else case when it's greater than zero, when it's greater than zero, then what you will do is you write greater than zero. And as usual, you do this and you end it off with the, just a second, you do this and you finish it off with this. So this is our program. Um, let's just run it. Let's just run this app.java. Let's just run this program. And so we just run this program right now. And so what does it say? It's going to say, oh, there's an error. Oh yeah. See, as you can see, there's an error. I forgot to correct that out. There was an error. So to correct it, I have to just go here and put the semicolon, semicolon, and then let's do it again. Let's just do it again. Errors do happen. So there's nothing to worry about. Even a professional programmer will do error. will do error. So yeah, this is the program as you can see. This is the program. Um, so what did you saw right now is the program. And as you can see, what does it say? It says, hello world, because it's programmed to say hello world in the beginning. Then it says, um, subscribe to my channel, because it's programmed to say subscribe to my channel, and it's graded at zero. So this is the program here. Just a quick program, and definitely it's a lifesaver if you're gonna be a programmer and you use your iPad for programming, so, uh, for programming like, say for example, play playgrounds and all that stuff. Um, this, is, this is definitely worth it, guys. This is definitely worth it. I did sweat a bit, so yeah, you can see that watermark. Uh, yeah, this is the thing. It works perfectly fine. Um, if you're so for schoolwork, for programming, this is definitely worth it, guys. So what do I say? At the beginning, at the beginning, it, it looked like a scam. It definitely looked like a scam. Um, I was really worried. So after doing some little bit of YouTube search, um, I came to know that you have to do the you know FNC to connect. And after that, everything is fine. Just need to change the default settings. Um, yeah, that's it, guys. Very nice video. I mean, very very worth it. By the way, it's very worth it. Instead of buying the hundred bucks. It's very worth it. And the new update that's there for this iPad is just insane. So it's worth it, guys. It's worth it. So make sure you get it. Um, don't miss your chance for 10 bucks, 17 bucks. It's nothing. Instead of spending the $100 Apple M1 MacBook, M M1, uh, this thing. So M1 um, keyboard, um, the Magic Keyboard. This is definitely worth it. And that Magic Keyboard only works on the, you know, the latest iPads. And so this is definitely worth it. Um, now let's check, quickly check on the, this thing. Let's quickly check this open. Let's quickly do it. So yeah, let me quickly connect to it and we'll see if this works. So this is the second part of the video. We're gonna quickly connect to um, um, the this thing. We're gonna quickly connect to FireTap to see whether it works or not. Just go here, type Beyblade. Yeah, it works, it works a bit, it works. Beyblade, Beyblade, and then, you know, subscribe. <laughs> subscribe, just subscribe guys, subscribe. Please subscribe, subscribe. Yeah, make sure you subscribe. Yeah, it works, it does work. The typing stuff does work. Let me just do this and yeah. It does work. The typing stuff does work. See guys, it does work. It's a bit lag. It's a bit laggy here and there, but it does work. So yeah, it's really good. Um, it does work on this. It does definitely gonna, that means it's gonna work on Samsung. Um, of, of course it's gonna work on iPhones and on the other devices. And um, as you can see, it does work. It works perfectly fine. Um, you can type, you can type anything you want. And as you can see, this space button is meant for activating. And so if I click on space right now, this is just an example I'm giving you, it'll activate. And so, yeah, um, this is what it is. Um, that's it, guys. Thank you for watching this video. What do I say? This is definitely worth it because this is going to work on the Amazon Fire Tab. Maybe not that perfect because Amazon Fire Tab is a little worst compared to the uh, Apple iPads and the Samsung. It's a little okay. It's not that premium, so it's not going to work that much, but it really does its job. It really does its job. So, yeah. So thank you guys for watching this video. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Before the video ends, guys, I'll leave this in the description below if you really want to get yours, if you want to get one of this. It's definitely worth it. For MacBook, for, for iPads, I mean, for my iPads, for, um, the, for the Samsung tablets and the Fire HD, this is definitely worth it. It's technically a multi-device and it's Bluetooth, um, whereas the other one is not Bluetooth and it's kind of heavy to hold it too. So this is worth it. And at the same time, you can buy a lot of stuff with this money. I mean, with saving those 100 bucks, with 90 bucks, you can buy a lot of stuff. Even get it to a poor if you want to. You can do a lot of stuff with this. So that's it, guys. This is very this is very worth it. A $17 keyboard is for sure worth it than buying that 100 bucks, no matter what. That $17 is the reason why this W, this gets the W. Um, so yeah, definitely a good keyboard. 
Um, I did try the other one, that Magic Keyboard, on like you know the Apple the Apple Store, but it was still okay. It's similar. It's similar to this one. There's no changes. It's similar to this one. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Really goodbye. I'm saying bye bye. I'm saying bye bye.